Aloha, I'm Sandy Kelly from Surf Lexus. Although we miss seeing many of you in person, we are thrilled to bring you our Virtual Lux Living Masterclass. This is the second in a series where you'll get to experience amazing with masters in food, wine, and more. From our Surf Lexus Ohana to yours, be safe and enjoy this masterclass with Chef Kelvin Rowe. Mahalo. To the second Lux Living Masterclass. I'm Amanda Noguchi and I am here with the one and only Chef Kelvin Rowe. We're so excited to have you here. I've been a big fan since I think college when I was addicted to your scones. So to be able to be learning from you, the master who has been leading the way, it's so exciting. So we're gonna be making some dumplings here tonight. And I think you at home, you have your bags from Foodland that is amazing that they just preset. I spend hours shopping, trying to get all the ingredients that my husband sends me around for, but they packed it up for you. I think they're still available if you haven't got one. You can order from Foodland to get the ingredients here. A small little tip that I'm gonna to give to you at home is chef goes fast. This is a lot of work. Um, I think once you learn how to do it, you, it gets faster and faster. But for me, learning to do this, I had to go really slow in the beginning time. So if I were you, I would say maybe watch, see what he does, and then afterwards go back, make the recipe yourself. You can pause it, Make sure you're not burning anything on the, on the stove over here. Not that I've ever done that before, Chef. But I would just say that watch, enjoy, and then go back and cook. If you think you're a master, then you can just cook right alongside Chef here. I don't think we really need an introduction. Diamond Head Market has been around for, what, nearly 20 years, 20 right? 20 years. And I just learned a little fact about you. I was doing some research. So you actually went to business school. Yes. And then to culinary school? I did not go to culinary school. I was self-taught. So you're just a master that way. I love that. <laughs> I don't so know about that. But... That's how you've had such a successful business model is by really learning the business of the restaurant industry and then going into opening a restaurant. I think it helps. You know, it gives you the edge. Um, most chefs, they just learn how to cook and they don't know the, the business side of it. So I thought I'd you know, benefit from that. And and now not only have you benefited, we have benefited as a community. And I think our culinary school, you teach at the culinary school. You've done so much for the school. I know you've donated to them. And now you're really giving back to them by training our next generation of the business side of the school. Yes. Is that correct? Yes. I, the Culinary Institute, um, we just broke, um, we just awarded the contract for the second phase. Wonderful. And so we're going to be building the restaurant, the innovation center, and the auditorium. So I think that now in these day and ages, usually you're busy cooking, doing things for restaurant week. I know Servco has been a huge supporter of restaurant week as well. And this is kind of inspired by that restaurant week that's happening. So yes. I know it's happening a little different this year. Can yeah, you this tell year, us? This year we're focusing on supporting all the restaurants. The restaurants um, industry, as you know, is just um, collapsing and restaurant week. And there's a lot of organizations trying to help the um, different uh, restaurant organizations. And uh, I, I wanna do as much as I can to help support them. Our business has been a great model for the takeout concept right now that is allowed. There's a lot of restaurants that are unfortunately cannot do that kind of um, service. So um, I want to do whatever we can to support them. Wonderful. Well, us too. Well, I know everyone is dying to get started cooking here. So maybe later we can talk a little bit more about how you folks at home can help us all support our restaurants. Order from any of the restaurants that are out there, but let's take it away with our dumplings. Tell us a little bit about what we're making today. Okay. So thank you, Amanda. It's great to be here. And I want to thank all of you for um, registering and supporting uh, Lexus and Servco with this um, masterclass series. Today, I'd like to do um, one of my favorite versions of a dumpling. You know, dumpling comes in all different kinds of um, variations. You know, Chinese has wontons and gaojis and all the little dim sums. The Koreans do mandu, Japanese do, does gyoza, and it's just a matter of how you fold it 
uh, you can boil it, fry it, or steam it. Um, and it's all about the sauces. So today, my version is going to be a little bit kicked up instead of wontons with your soyu and mustard. I'm going to do my favorite black bean sauce. And this was inspired with one of my favorite dishes is shrimp with black bean sauce over noodles. And so it's kind of deconstructed to make it um, a little bit of all my favorites in one dish. So like a little pocket of love. I can't wait. We're a big yeah, noodle my, family too, but noodles can, you know, noodles, dumplings kind of similar. So I can't wait to see. This. Yeah. So my version is, you know, basically wontons is um, pork and shrimp um, or galgis. Um, today, my version is just going to be shrimp. So I'm going to just start and dig, just yeah, go right in and start in. doing it. Um, show it to, can you show it to our audience at home? So I this have is shrimp. shrimps that were clean, deveined, and coarsely chopped. Um, I like a little bit of texture, so I don't chop it too fine. Um, I have ginger. And everything is to taste. So if you don't like something spicy, don't put the pepper. If you like it sweeter, put more sugar, et cetera. And everyone has a recipe at home. So you already know what your measurements are at home for cooking. But like Chef said, add a little bit, add a lot. Like for me, I would be adding lots of ginger in there. I love the ginger. Yep. Keeps us healthy, right? Yep. So I'm adding all these ingredients for the wontons. The sesame oil, the ginger, the this is an important part is the cilantro. I cut it coarsely. I also use the stems because um, I think the stems have uh, that more punch, that mm. pungency mm -hmm. that I like. Um, so pretty much I have a paste going here. I wanna just stir it up. How easy is that? You know, it's not, it's not very um, difficult to do. And um, can you show it to our, our, our guys at home there? Just Maybe so easy. Get this out of your way so we can see. Okay. And you can do different variations by adding pork, um, chili, garlic, you know, and depending on how, you, how you're going to uh, eat it. Are you going to fry it? Are you going to steam it or boil it? What's your um, favorite, Chef? What's your favorite to make? I know you can make them all beautifully, but if you're cooking for yourself at home and your friends, what well, are you Well, for doing? healthy reasons, I like to boil it or steam it, but it tastes the best fried. So mm. I'm going to show you a variation of this. This is a fried wonton. It's the same mixture, but instead of boiling it, I'm going to fry it. I, fr I fried it. And... Um, I have a little bit of egg wash um, that I use as my glue and I want to line the edge of it um, and make a triangle. And it's important not to um, overstuff it because you don't want it falling out. when you're That's always my problem. There's too such much. a little bit that goes in there, which there's something about that, right? This was a way you could take a small amount of meat and ingredients and make it really stretch a long way for your family. This I always is, am so impressed by how little you have to have to make so many dumplings. Well, this is a, basically a wonton, but it's also Italians call it tortellini. So um, you could just easily input cheese and make your own dumplings in a different version, you know? Um, and then, so today I'm going to be making galgis because it has, um, you can put the most filling in the packet or in the pouch. And um, so I just fold it in half, basically. So that's like for us beginners, that's also easy. You know, the fancy folds and the ruffles and yeah. some of these look like origami when they come out. Yeah. So this is so, my style, fold it over and seal it and have the most filling in there. Yep. I love that. And another trick is you see the wonton wrappers. They are, um, one side is more flour than the other. The reason for that is that you want to leave the flour side outside. So when you, when you, um, it won't stick to your surfaces or each other. I so you want to leave the, the flower side. Flower side out. out. Okay. Yeah. Tip to the audience there, flower side out so it doesn't stick. And yeah. if you all have any questions, 
please just put them in the question box. I've got my little trusty iPad over here and I will ask as many questions as I can of Chef as we're going along here. Another version of a dumpling, since we're on dumpling right now, um, you could put pork in this, right? Or you could just omit the shrimp, just put pork in all of these ingredients, you can enter one. And Japanese make gyoza, they put it sideways like this instead of flat and they crimp it. So, so it becomes gyoza. Chef, I have a question for you. Our audience is wondering, should we be boiling our water now yet? Should they have their water up and boiling? Um, the shrimps will take only like two minutes. So I would, you, you can start it, but I'll put it in during the time we're making okay. the sauce. So you'll tell us when it's time for them to boil yeah. their water. Okay. So I like here, your eagerness though out there, guys. Good job. So I did make all of this ready to uh, boil. And Amanda, you can help me later with that. And I'm sure. just going to put it in the water Okay. Uh, and bring the water to boil. You don't want to overcook the shrimp. Um, what's going to happen is the pea is going to start all getting um, mushy and the stuffing is going to start to fall out. Okay. So do you want me to turn it on for you now or wait a little bit? Um, you could turn it on low and just let it simmer for a while. And then when we're ready, I can just put it in. So this is the interesting part. So instead of dumplings with just um, your, when you go to a Chinese restaurant and you get wontons, it's normally a soy sauce with mustard. But I think we can do a little better than that. Yeah, let's get fancy. Or they get that sweet chili sauce, right, for the wontons out of a, a jar. But I'm going to kick it up a notch. Okay, so for those at home, I just brought the water. We're on like medium here. So it doesn't have to be fully boiling yet, but that way when it is time to crank it up, it's going to take it less time to get there. Is that right? That's what we're doing over here? Yep. I'm just making stuff up. So you're nope, the chef. You're right on. Okay, so we're going to do this. We're going to do the sauce now. And so the sauce is a um, Chinese black bean sauce, but it is um, my version, which is a combination of a lot of different styles of black bean sauce that I've tried. Um, I, I pretty much grew up watching my grandparents actually make this dish. And so I've adapted it um, to add pork and um, everything you see right here. Okay, so it looks really complicated, but it really isn't. It's stuff that you probably have at home already. Um, so I'm gonna just dive right in and just show you, just heat up my pan. I'm going to add the oil, okay, Chinese so style. We're making our sauce now, that's what we're gonna make the sauce. Yes, we're it's making a the Chinese sauce. black bean okay. sauce. Actually, it's called um, an imperial Chinese black bean sauce because um, of the pork. Normally, you don't always find pork in a black bean sauce. It's a vegetarian. Uh -huh. um, and I'm also gonna um, uh, kick it up a little bit with a little egg at, um, at the end to make it a little bit richer. Okay. So I've heated my pan. I'm gonna put a little oil in there. Oil, okay, oil. pan, we got oil. What's and next? Normally Chinese food, when you're cooking Chinese style, you wanna heat the oil and add your ginger and garlic to season the oil, to flavor the oil. Um, I tend to put the ginger, but put the garlic a little later because I don't want to burn the garlic. Sure. And so I'll put it in just a little bit later. So now we have our ginger in the pan. You ginger, a little bit of jalapeno, nice all Ooh, to taste. Okay, okay guys, okay. you don't you don't need to follow this exactly. So I like a little spicy, so I do you put a little more, extra. Yeah. You guys don't like it out there. Like if you're cooking for your grandma, maybe you leave the jalapeno out. And then I have the. I have the, the black beans also now in the pan. So you were telling me earlier about the black beans. You actually take your black beans and you soak them in water. I soak them in water. Um, I don't like the pungency of the black beans, so I like a little bit more of a subtle black bean. Sure, okay. But I do soak it, rinse it, and chop it. Okay, so soak that's what... it, rinse it, chop it. We're yep. talking about the black beans. And so you see it. all this, um, the aromatics in. I'm going to add my pork now. I barely see it because I'm so short and I got a social distance you, but I smell it and it's amazing. Okay. Just cook down your pork and... Um, okay, we've got the pork in there now and you just add it in like just a little bit. This is going to be what's going on top of our dumpling, right? So 
We're cooking the sauce. pork here. I'm confused. This Usually I'd be putting it in tea. the dumpling, but we're cooking it because it's our sauce. I love it. Sometimes, you know, people always want to know how to make Chinese food, right? Um, when, when I grew up, we had like Titus Chan and all those Yan King cooks, but I don't see no Chinese cooks anymore around. Oh, Ning Sai does East Nick West. Yeah, that's, that's not right. Chinese, right? It's a, I'm going to add my garlic in now because I didn't want it to burn. And here's why it's like such a melting pot. It's like some things are a little bit Japanese, a little bit Chinese, a little bit Filipino. So it's really nice. I like how we're going fancy and we're really representing ourselves in Hawaii. And you can just imagine the smell because you have ginger, garlic, chili. Now I added the black bean and the pork. And that looks pretty much um, cooked. I want to... So we're on like a medium heat here? Is this like medium high heat? We yeah, medium on? high. Okay. Chinese style, of course, is on full high. Yeah, always. Um, but Hot. I'm, I'm always scared of burning everything, so... What's, what do we have here? What's going in next? I'm going to deglaze okay. the pan a little. And with, what does um, deglazing the pan do? Oh, all the charred little caramelized bottom, it's called a font. Mm -hmm. um, you want to get that off the pan into the sauce because into that's where the, the richness and yes. the, yeah. I'm always scraping it off and eating it because that's where the good stuff is. So I wanted, I'm just going to deglaze a little with some wine. Okay. White wine, rice clean, wine. White wine. White wine. White wine. Clean the bottom, get that's all that where stuff the off. Hiding. I was wondering where the wine was this evening. <laughs> I didn't bring any. Um, okay. And then I'm going to add, start my building my sauce. So, we have so I have, here. I have chicken stock. You can use water if you don't want chicken stock or beef, beef broth or, and I want to deglaze, finish deglazing the pan. Okay, we're still deglazing. So now tell me what you just put in. I was reading a That question. was chicken stock. Chicken stock, okay. Or any kind of stock. Any kind of chicken, vegetable, beef, yep. any kind of stock. And yep. we're deglazing our pan. I know we had a question from you guys at home. We need to see folding the... The dumpling again. For you, it's this easy thing. It just was like one, two, three. Okay. But for some of us, it doesn't come as naturally. Okay. But I, sh I will show you that right after I finish this because okay. I don't want, the, the, I don't want the, the gravy or the sauce to evaporate too much because then I won't have the body that I'm looking for. Got it. So I want to thicken it just a little bit. Um, and I reserve some chicken stock or you can use water, cold. Okay. You don't oh. want to use anything warm because the, the cornstarch will not dissolve. So this is cornstarch. So we're mixing the cornstarch and the water together. Or the stock in this case. It's and stock. this is like to thicken. It's called a slurry. A slurry. And you want to get the lumps out with, and it's with cold water. The lumps will come out easy. Okay. Now, I don't like to put too much gravy. In fact, sometimes you don't even need the slurry. If you want more of a, a lighter sauce, yeah. It, Personally, I don't like it when you go to a Chinese restaurant and you get that gooey, thick gravy. Right. Um, I would prefer not to, but in this case, I'm going to just add a tiny bit. Okay. So that's and like it would just bring it together. A tablespoon, two, three tablespoons. Depending yeah. how much. How much you have. We can actually start putting that in there. Okay. This is, I'm doing this? Oh, I can. Okay. You want it? You You're can help the me. chef. I feel a little put nervous. It in. Okay. So at this point, you can see the sheen. You want to okay, cook off the, the, the slurry until it's a translucent color like this, okay? Dumplings are going in. So our water was cranked up. So now we're going in with our dumplings. At this point, I'd like to use, um, flavor the sauce a little at this point. And I have cilantro, Chinese parsley. And what I do is I do use part of the stems again because I think the flavor is in the stem. I like that um, flavor. I have a little bit of green onions that I, I kind of like the whitish part of the green onion and the light green for this purpose. See, and I told you he was going to move fast on us, right? So if you want to watch, don't, don't feel defeated. You can go back and watch this. It's going to be recorded. So you can always go back and rewatch it again. What I did over here is I dropped the dumplings. Are they going to stick to the bottom? Do I need to worry can, about can, them? Uh, stir it. Give I it can a quick stir, stir. Okay. Hey guys, I'm stirring them because yeah, they probably would have stuck to the bottom. Luckily, At this point, I, I want to just, I want to just, um, 
season my sauce a little, okay? So I have a tiny bit of sugar. Sugar is just to counterbalance the pungency of the black bean, but you don't really want it sweet. You want it just so that it's counterbalancing. You don't really want too much of it. Um, I'm also going to put some black pepper and a little bit of sesame oil towards the end. I find that when I put the oil at the end, it that was sesame brings oil. sesame oil. Okay. It brings out the sheen. You see oh, the glossy. Yeah. So sesame oil is more of like a finishing. You don't really cook finishing, with sesame. Yes. Right. And what makes this kind of imperial or something that you don't normally get in this version of a, uh, my version of a black bean sauce, I have a scrambled egg and I'm going to drizzle it into the sauce. Ooh, and it's going like to just that. make it a little bit richer. I wouldn't stir it right away. I would just go ahead and put it so, in, I don't drizzle know if you it. Folks can see it at home, but the egg is just kind of cooking almost in the sauce as he's pouring it in. It's just going to cook in there. Are my dumplings done? I feel yes. like we're at like two minutes there. Okay. So do I have a So there we go. Box? You see, it's not, it's sort of like scrambled eggs in there, but it gives a little Chef, bit of richness. And if we show them here at the front what it looks like, beautiful. And then what should I oh, put camera. my dumplings on? Okay, we're going to now add it into the pan. Just go oh, directly in the pan. The dumplings are going into the pan, okay. Just like pasta. I like it. You know when it. you do? Yeah. Because you do want to kind of get that um, sauce into the, the, the pasta itself mm -hmm. instead of just pouring it over. Yeah. I'm sure you guys look like this at home too, right? This is what it looks like when you're fixing it too. Okay, so we're just mixing it in. So they cook, tell me how long, what's the ideal over you can here? Turn that off. Okay. And what's the ideal time that we're cooking? That was like two, three, four minutes? Two to three minutes until it's Because it's just shrimp, right? right. It's not like we have chicken and things we right. have to worry about. It's well, just, shrimp, you should cook it all the way through. But it cooks though. quick. Yeah. Okay. And then um, that's pretty much it. I want to plate it. Um, I'll get a plate and show you Beautiful. how to maybe garnish so it a little. We're, we're thinking about the plate. There's, I know we need to do the folding again of it. Okay. There's a lot of different kinds of dumplings we can make. And here we boiled our dumplings, but you can also right. steam them. You can fry them. Do you think there's like a, what would you say is the trend now in dumplings? Is it one way over the other or is it every, everyone's own personal prefer, preference? <laughs> um, you know, dim sum nowadays is so popular, but you know, it, it's, it is what it is. You know, it's like you can um, adapt it to your taste. You know, I wouldn't go too crazy, but um, it smells so good. I wish you guys, even through my mask that I sprayed uh, essential oil on, I can still smell it. It smells so good. So you can just imagine all the flavors, you know, you have salty, sweet, pungent, spicy, um, aromatics all in one dish. So you get the, your taste buds, uh, your tongue, all the sensories going at the same time. And that's kind of like um, what you like to achieve, you know, when you're cooking something. Um, there, there's not so much for color, but what I can do is show you what, how I like to eat it. And I love Chinese parsley on everything, you know, and you don't need to, a lot of people don't like it, but um, I'm going to go ahead and put that on. And I got some green onions also. And more, a little bit more chili pepper to your taste. So let's see, we're at 624. We've cooked, we have some questions coming in. We went really fast and I know I was talking to you asking questions. I hope I didn't make it hard for anyone to hear at home, but trying to reiterate what's going on here. So can we review our steps of, okay. what, we of what we just did, what we made happen here? So we'll do some folding of the wonton. Is that, can we do another little demo? Trick? Yes, actually show I'll show you a folds. few different more folds. Ooh, I wanted great. to show you a, um, what, what, did, what, what did the caller ask for? Wontons again? Yeah, they just wanted to know how to do the fold. But let's see. Okay. Let's see what you Okay, here's a little with. tip. Let's okay. do our, uh, the novice, the entry level one. Okay. Okay. So when you're making a lot of these, because you could probably eat 10, right? <laughs> That's, that was, how many was that? That was six. Six. 
I'm sure one person could eat that, right? And so you, when you're making for a family or a party, you're gonna have to make a lot, you know? And it, it seems a little um, cumbersome, but what you can do is keep your fingers one dry, one wet, okay? When you're doing this so that it doesn't become a mess. So I keep my index finger wet and that's the one that I use to manipulate the, um, the egg wash. And so what I wanna do is, I'm gonna do the wonton fold again, okay. or the tortellini fold. And so it's just putting it in the middle and making a triangle. Don't forget, don't overstuff it because it will come out. So there's your triangle. And now I want to bring the edge together like this and push the top up like that. Okay. I can demonstrate another fold and in, um, I guess more Chinese and Japanese both have pot stickers. I don't know why, <laughs> but um, it's pretty much folded the same way as the gauchi, but they stand it up on the side and then they crimp the tops like mandu. Mandu is Korean dumplings. This is now Japanese style, but they use pork. Gyoza is mostly pork. So like I said, you can inter, inter uh, change all your ingredients. So here's your gauji flat. So pot stickers just flatten the bottom. So there's the flat, right? And you know how to make pot stickers, right? You pan fry it, the bottom, to make it nice and crispy or golden brown. Put it in a frying pan of oil. Then you cover it and you add a little water to steam it. And that is sort of your gauji. And I'll show you shumai since we're while we're dumplings at it. 101, right? right? All the, all the kinds um, of dumplings. <laughs> so shumai is usually pork and shrimp. Um, so you can use the variations of mixing all of these guys around. And this one is pretty easy. You just make a little pocket in your, your, your hand like this and just push it down. And these are steamed. You don't want to boil or fry these because <laughs> it has a hole. It's sort of. Okay. What are the dumplings, Amanda? <laughs> so should we use all of the ingredients we prep? So what do we do with the extra? Well, like, what are we going to do with all of our extra stuff here? You just typically oh, here's make a tip. more? Here's a tip. I forgot to tell you this. Okay. You know when I was making my black bean sauce? I had extra shrimp filling or shrimp. So when you put the pork in and cook the pork off, you can add some of this in the sauce. So there's shrimp in the sauce. Just a little tip. I like that. And um, it brings it a little bit more um, shrimp black bean sauce, you know, because it's actually in the sauce. So we have another question from the audience, which I was wondering the same thing, is we have all these ingredients and we, you usually have, how much comes in a packet usually if you're gonna buy the wraps from the store? Is it like 20, 40, you know? It's about 40 for about six ounces. Okay. Yeah. 40 um, wraps, so you're gonna yeah, make a but, lot of these. But what's great about wonton peas and all these peas is um, you can freeze them. And it's like he read my mind. So this is going to be my question. You freeze them like this, or do you make them and freeze them? Both. Both. Okay. Yeah. So, so a quick tip is you can IQF it also. So you take a pan, freeze it, make sure it's not touching each other. So wontons. So you want to place the tray in the freezer and as it freezes it will become a solid mat you know like a ice cube and then you can gather it and put it in a container container or a ziploc bag like iqf that's what individually frozen means and um 
So now, not only can you have instant frozen Simon out of the bag when you're lazy and you, you want to just grab something, you can go to your little bag of wontons and have it with your frozen Simon. That's another tip to using dumplings. So again, dumplings can be fried, boiled, steamed, pan fried, deep fried. Um, using all these different variations of the same ingredients. You know, it's like... Um, so we actually could have made the shrimp like you did, and then we can make some more and add some pork into it. So we could actually make ourselves several different varieties of dumplings, put some in the freezer. So this is the, I like this, this is a good tip. So you freeze them first on the pan so they don't stick. That's how we get them not to stick. That was the question is how can and can you freeze them? You can freeze them on the pan. Then you like just overnight, a few hours. Yeah, just until the, the pea is frozen so it doesn't stick to each other. Yep. And uh, be careful when you're defrosting it though. You don't want to defrost it with it touching each other. Because then they'll stick together. Yeah, and you want to flour the bottom of your defrosting, whatever tray. I see, so on. you when you defrost them, walk me through this. So I'm gonna defrost them, I've got, I, you know, I, I froze them, I put them in the bag, and now I'm getting them out. Then I lay them out on a pan not touching, is that right? Yep. And then do they fully defrost before Or you, you could actually them? start boiling it if it's frozen. Okay. You could boil it also. Just a little bit. I like to defrost it a little, but um, it's so thin that it, it'll cook pretty, pretty quick. Pretty quickly. Yeah, I wouldn't, fry, but I would boil it okay. or steam. But you want to defrost it. Okay, yeah. defrost it. I don't know, sometimes you're too hungry or you don't want to. Right, you just, <laughs> you just throw can't wait, right? In, and then you just cook it a little extra longer to make sure you cook yep. it all the way through yep. in the yep. middle. That's wonderful, yeah. I love this. So uh, the, the other, the other um, style I was gonna show you was Korean, which is mandu, and what they do is they make it, so pea comes in all different sizes and shapes, and rice pea, or flower pea. And so this is a flower pea. Um, Koreans use a similar pea, but they use the round, it's round. Mm -hmm. And then they do the half moon and then they crimp it and they make that, um, they fold it the three times. It's supposed to be a good look or something. <laughs> I don't know, three, everything. Three, not four, okay, <laughs> four. good to know. Yeah, don't do four. <laughs> We have another question here. So a few questions actually, and these are great questions. So one we have is a customer has uh, wrappers they buy from a Chinese noodle shop. What kind of wrappers should they buy? Okay, so this is actually from a Chinese, that one across the street from Oahu Market. Uh -huh. um, they have all different kinds. If it's boiled versus if it's fried. I particularly prefer the thin, the thinnest pea because, and when you cook it, you can actually see through it, like so the shrimp. you have to be careful with it. You have to be careful, but it's also a more delicate and it's not as tough. The mm. thicker pea becomes tough. So, um, I don't know, it's It's pretty, up to you, it's a personal preference. When you go to one. the supermarket, it's already pre-packed. Um, those are perfectly mm -hmm. fine. I just, pers I just happened to go downtown to buy noodles from, I, I don't want to try and say the name of it, but <laughs> it's across from Oil Market. And, they and it's local, we're supporting all, local, right? Yeah, that's a good point you bring up right now because yeah. you know we're trying to support all the local restaurants. Um, everybody is having such a hard time. You know, Chinatown is so dead, but I find parking, <laughs> you know, it's like, but I, go down there and I forced myself to buy stuff. Just to support. So I went to Lee's Bakery and I bought a custard pie, but I landed up buying three. <laughs> you know, because I'll give it away. You have to support the restaurant industry right now. Um, any way you can. Um, there's a lot of delivery services now. There's a lot of um, uh, programs to help support the um, uh, the restaurants, yeah, that's you know, right. Food Go Go has one with Hawaii Restaurant. Um, you know, the the all those Aloha Challenge, yep. they have all these, and you know, we we've never experienced anything like this before, and it's so important that we 
keep these restaurants alive as long as we can, because a lot of them may never open again. And um, without us supporting them, you know, a great idea would be a hey, buy some gift certificates and give it to those um, hotel and need. restaurant workers that have been displaced. Yeah, and great. you're helping. You're helping the restaurant, the restaurant and you're helping and someone. you're helping them. Yeah, that's wonderful. Yeah, and um, you know, pretty much it's it's to buy um, local when we can, right? To support you need we locals. need to support the local. Uh, supermarkets as well yeah and know? cooking at home this is what this is what i love about these kinds of things is we're really encouraging people to cook at home i know you guys have some more questions out there so sorry we are getting into our our restaurant save the restaurants world but what Again? is the brand of black beans that you use can you share what brand does it matter what brand what aisle where are we going for the black beans you know in most asian mark in most stores now in the asian food aisle you'll find Chinese black beans. If not, you have to go to Chinatown. But that might be good. You can get roast dog. You That's can get right. dim sum, right? Then your I, wife's mad. I, you yeah, since I was downtown um, buying my noodles and all that, I did go and buy the black bean sauce from Chinatown. And okay. Is there um, a brand? Do you know what brand it is? No, I don't. But um, any kind of a salted fermented black bean. Salted fermented black bean. Okay. We've got, to, we got that question twice. So obviously that's a important one. What about um, the flour? As far as when you're freezing, it doesn't matter if you dust it with rice flour or No, you should flour. use regular flour. Regular yeah. flour, okay. Or so some people use cornstarch or potato starch. Oh, okay, so either one, yeah. then it makes it a little extra. It, it just prevents it from sticking. And when you defrost it, you don't want a paste either. Right. So it's the, the, as little as possible. Okay, so yeah. not rice flour. And this is a great flour. time to be making dumplings and freezing them because you have nothing else to do at home. Yeah, no, that's right. And you can give them to friends, right? You freeze them and you can give them exactly, to your friends. That's, exactly. When we, Mark and I traveled to the mainland uh, last year for the holidays and we made 500 dumplings together oh as a family. No. And in the Midwest, you know, people aren't used to handmade dumplings. So they went and gave them out to all my mom's friends and neighbors. And now everyone, they're excited. They're like, when are you guys coming back? And I'm like, now you guys are friends. do you miss us? Or do you just want dumplings? I think they just want Mark's dumplings. But <laughs> it was really fun to make them as a family. And we've kind of made it a tradition now as a family to make dumplings together. But we've never made anything like this. So I'm excited to try this at home. I think we have some more questions coming in over here. Oh, this is a great one. If I want to make vegetarian dumplings, what would be good ingredients to substitute for the shrimp? Mm. Can you use like mushrooms, tofu? You can. Um, the, you know, any vegetable, okay. you know, stuffing wise, so um, you can use- any vegetable. Um, is there something not to use? What? inside like i was thinking tofu. i wouldn't do anything too watery yeah so is, is tofu okay you really have to press it or um no you can use tofu um because koreans make their mandus with tofu right with kimchi yeah bean sprouts cabbage etc and and it's pretty much vegetarian i personally add pork in my mandus which some people do um but if you follow that kind of a recipe, it's pretty much vegetarian. So um, you get the tofu, you cut it up in cubes, you squeeze the water out in a cheesecloth and squeeze all your vegetables out, your kimchi, everything. And then you um, make the filling. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of a vegetarian um, filling. Yes. The black bean sauce, you can also do vegetarian. You don't have to put the pork. Right. So you could just do everything you did here, but just remove the pork. And instead of chicken add, stock, vegetable stock or water. And even could we add like tofu to that instead yes, of pork? Yes. Yes. So I like this version with um, fried tofu. So I dust the tofu blocks with a little bit of cornstarch. Well, first you dry it out, pat it dry. Then you cut it in chunks. Then you put... Um, cornstarch on it and then you fry it until it's crispy golden brown that you can use with any kind of stir fry um, 
but I have had it with black bean sauce in that version, and it's really good. Anything that, any kind of sauce, will, the tofu will pick up the flavor and absorb it really well. So that's a great um, vegetarian option. Well, now we're really going deep. I think we, we're, now we have a question. What is a traditional recipe for pork hash? Can you share that? What a recipe for pork hash is? <laughs> pork hash. Just whip it out of your pocket. Okay, pork hash normally is um, uh, shrimp and pork. They put water chestnuts, they put ginger, onion, cilantro sometimes. Garlic. Um, garlic, sesame oil, soy, a little sugar. Um, I'm getting so hungry. Is, is this going to sit <laughs> you, you up there? You should try it. To eat it you or should what? try it. <laughs> no, well, well, did I answer that question? Okay, so. For the pork hash. Pork hash. Okay, so I have to tell you another option for pork hash. You know how Chinese, some of you may know this dish or not, but sometimes they steam the pork hash on a plate. And they add the dried, um, the dried salted fish. Chinese call it hamni, and they'll put it, dot it on the top of the pork hash, and they'll steam it as a as a pancake almost. Do you ever have that? I've had it, but not recently. It sounds yeah. so good. So right the same filling that that goes into this um, wonton pea. Um, people just. I think that's what they're asking, pork hash. Is that what they're asking? Yeah, I think, I think that's it. If they're not, that sounds amazing as well. So I'm sure they'll enjoy that. So we have someone, I think they were cooking along and they said, Susie says, if the sauce is too spicy, what can we do to fix it? Or do we just have to start over? No, 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 no. Don't start over. How spicy? If it's way too spicy, I would take out half and do it again with some of that. Or add more chicken stock or water, dilute it, add a little bit more of your cornstarch slurry and bring it back to a boil. Mm -hmm. um, try that. If it doesn't work, let me know. <laughs> okay. Don't put sugar. Don't, don't ever put sugar when you're trying to, trying to make it less correct spicy. a spicy dish. Cause yeah, that will not that, work. Yeah, so, so it would be water to dilute it or okay. stock. And then we have, do we have any, um, do we have any gluten-free suggestions, alternatives? Is there like a gluten-free, so is the rice wrapper gluten-free or is there still flour in it? Do you know? Uh, rice is okay, but not many places sell the rice pea. So when you go to dim sum, you know, you can tell the difference. One is a pure white, it's more, it's, um, it's like, the i don't know what it's called it's like almost clear it it turns kind of clear when it when you steam it um but it's like half moon it's half moon it's white uh -huh. when you boil the flour it turns yellow so when you go to the dim sum cart or dim sum restaurant and you see some white and some yellow the white one is rice I don't know anywhere in the markets that sell it, but the, the, noodle how, the noodle factories do make the rice. The rice. They make that with look fun. You know what look fun is? Yeah. Or um, chow fun. The noodle. The white chow fun. Uh -huh. It's rice. Okay. So we'll have to free. do some research because I'm sure now people are going to want to know where to get this. So we have another one that is asking that their dumpling is falling apart in the water. Is there anything they can do? Uh, yes. Did they overstuff? They either overstuffed or they did not use the glue. Ah, uh, the egg. The to... egg wash. So it's very important to use the egg wash. Sometimes I just use uh, water, but to guarantee your seal, mm -hmm. you should put the egg because it's a great binder, like a glue. Right. Um, whatever, if it starts opening up in the water stop <laughs> stop and then just so it's probably just it wasn't sealed good is the reason it's yeah the don't waste all your dumplings like that because they'll all open up so if you did a mistake okay i, I would do it again let's see it's 6 45 i think we have time for this question and i know we went so fast that like, could you kindly please please pretty please chef 
explain the process of how to make the filling again. Can we do just a quick, I know you don't have all your things, but to make this filling, just give them. Okay, so you folks saw the ingredient list on the recipe. Um, there was one little uh, typo and it said a uh, half a tablespoon of white pepper, I think, but it's a half a teaspoon. So don't put all that. But remember what I said, everything is to taste. So you kind of want to follow the recipe, but use it towards your personal your taste. taste. What you like. Okay. So pretty much the dumplings was my version of just a shrimp dumpling. I don't know if you folks ever tried this version before, but um, sometimes if you just order wonton soup at a Hong Kong style Chinese restaurant, they serve it like this. Most places will serve wontons in the soup, but it has the pork. So if you, if you luck out and find that version, uh, after tasting this, you'll know why I chose this version. Okay, because everybody can make the one with the pork and the water chestnuts and all that, but this one, it's unique. And I adapted it towards my personal tastes and likes. So, you know, most likely if somebody likes my taste, I'm just hoping that <laughs> they'll like it too, right? So if you don't, then go back to the pork filling with the, the traditional, um, and this is not rocket science, yeah, guys. This is like, everybody makes wontons and gauchi, you know? I mean, we're in Hawaii. And you can be creative with it, but can you give us through the steps of making this filling? Okay, Let's so, pretend like we're starting at the beginning. Okay, so what I did was I added um, the, the coarsely chopped shrimp that was deveined and shelled. And um, I added the ginger, the chopped cilantro with some of the stems, sesame oil, a little sugar, and salt and pepper. How easy is that? And um, this stuffing can actually be put over a piece of fish and steam, Chinese style. Oh, I like that. So if people have or any extra, pork hash, they you can put it over fish that. and steam it. And then what I like to do is I'll get soy sauce with chili pepper and sesame oil and a little ginger, heat it up and pour it over the top. Beautiful, that sounds wonderful. Yeah. So I don't know how hard this is and I'm not exactly sure what, what was what they wanted more explanation on the stuffing or the the the, the filling for the wontons but um you just mix it all together just mixed it and then tip make one and fry it or boil it or microwave it or do something to cook it you don't want to eat it raw to taste your seasonings and for me personally i need the balance of the saltiness the sweet the sesame oil. You have to taste those three with the cilantro. And if you don't taste that balance, then you just keep adding or to your liking. Um, but this particular recipe, I do like that balance of the, the cilantro, the sugar, the sesame oil, and the shrimp. So that's a great, that's a great tip. So make it, make one, have your boiling water going ripping hot, so you can then taste it. Yeah, and you don't even need like. to wrap it. You can just get a frying pan or stick it in the oven, the microwave oven, and just fry a piece and taste it. Because you can always add salt and pepper, but you cannot take away. Sure. Like, so the, the person who put too much chili pepper or salt, I mean, pepper in their dish and wanted to dilute it, um, it's always better to, less taste is more, less is go. more. You cannot take back, but mm -hmm. you can add. So um, I think that's to your liking, you know, it's just a tip that you don't want to make it all and then find out later that, oh my God, it's too salty or I forgot to put ginger or I forgot. No, you make one. I mean, that's what I do. Um, we have lots of shout outs to you giving you thanks, saying thank you so much. Um, so thanks to everybody for all the great questions. We have some questions and I'm really, I'm throwing them all to you. So don't get mad at me for these questions, but these guys and are- no, At least there's no heckling in the crowd, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. They're heckling from home. Yeah. So are the recipes for char siu bao buns different between steam versus baked? And if so, what are the differences? Oh, now I'm a dim sum chef. Yeah, that's what I was telling you. It's not me. <laughs> Personally, it's the same filling. Okay. Yeah. 
it's the same filling. Um, but you get the bake, you got the steam, it's a different dough. It's not the same dough. One has yeast, yeah. And then there's also the steam one, there's two styles too. There's the Chinese Hong Kong style, which in the dim sum houses, they put three on a little basket and then it cracks open in the middle a little, yeah. And then there's the steam one with just a smooth steam top. Those batters are also different. I see. One has yeast, the other one has baking soda, baking okay. powder. It doesn't have yeast. I personally like the Hong Kong style manapua. But again, the filling is pretty much the same. Okay, that's good. We've got another one. What's your preferred frying oil for wontons? What type of oil is not recommended to fry a wonton? So if you were to fry a wonton. Any kind of frying, you want to use um, something more like peanut oil or, you know, you could use vegetable oil, but um, you want something with a higher um, burning point or, you know, a, can tolerate a higher temperature. You don't want to use olive oil. You don't want to use extra virgin olive oil. You know, you don't want to use any of the oils that you eat raw with salad, but you can um, uh, deep fry with peanut oil is pretty common, you know, um, or any of your frying oils that you have at home. You don't have to go out and buy oil for this dish, you know. Um, use what you have. And then my rule of thumb for the oil is I don't like a deep dish oil, I like keeping it maybe one or two inches. Um, and So you just kind of use it. tongs and turn it over. So it's not like a whole pot of oil. Yep. Little goes a long way. Okay, that's great. Um, we have another question here. Can we order this dish at a restaurant anywhere? <laughs> um, don't come to Diamond Head Market. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, we For do this dish. For this Come particular to dish. Head market sometimes the in the grill because we have the market and the grill the market has the the prepared foods the grill has cooked to order plate lunches and on that side for specials we do do a variation of this black bean sauce if you wanted to try Beautiful. i think tonight or tomorrow the chef was making this sauce in her own way <laughs> but um don't quote me on that it might be gone already so go to the grill and everybody just go there and say that you want this and maybe we can just wear them down and then they'll start no making there's this some people who ask me to make it because they don't want to make it with the class so they ask me can you make it and have it ready for yeah. tomorrow to so. pick up yeah. yeah well we encourage people to make it at home right i think we had another question about how do you make the sauce less salty so is there a way that once you've made the sauce here to help make it less salty if they've over salted? Less salty. Um, put less, I don't think I put salt in the sauce. In your sauce? Yeah, so I would either cut back on the black bean sauce. Um, oh, maybe they didn't back on soak. Remember you were telling me the yeah, black beans, if you don't yeah, soak yeah, them, yeah. they can be or, very salty? Yes. Um, and also, I put a little bit of oyster sauce. You can cut back on the oyster sauce because that's, that's why I didn't put soy sauce. Nor, normally, I'll put both, but um, for this recipe, I just put the oyster sauce. Um, just put less. Now, remember, you can always add you cannot take out. So when you're doing your sauces and your tastings, I think it's a better idea to do less and just keep adding until you start tasting it and salt it. You should always salt at the end of your dish anyway, because you don't know how salty your other ingredients are. And so you want to monitor it and adjust it at the end. Okay, that's great. So I know we're, we're getting ready to wrap up here. We only have a few minutes left. But I just want to know, like, what made you, 20 years ago, what made you decide to start Diamond Head Marketing Grill? What was the, what wheels were turning for you there? Um, okay, so my background was, you know, in restaurants. And um, I, I just closed down a fine dining restaurant, Kahala Moon. And um, this location came up and I thought, well, I think I can give that a shot trying to redo what the original owners of Sunray Market and Burgerland, where we're located, um, did. And they opened in 1962. 
So that's 50, almost 60 years ago. So 20 years ago, I thought, oh, this would be a great concept if I could reinvent it. And I think that's why they chose my concept. The, the, the location was very coveted. Everybody wanted it. And they chose mine because I gave them my um, vision of how I wanted to create um, this concept of to go pick up, take out, like how Max's market used to be long ago and Sunray Market on uh, Montserrat Avenue. And, but going back to my childhood days and taking all the stuff that I remember eating, but I can no longer find anymore. So what we did was we started doing stuff that everybody pretty much does, but I just do it the way I like it. So, you know, we do fish, chicken, beef, Chinese, Korean, Japanese, stuff from our plantation days. <laughs> I wasn't around those days, but I ate the food that the people that were from the plantation days did. And I just adapted it to the way we like to eat it today. I think that's so, it, it still comes through. So you've been in business for 20 years and that still comes through. And I think, especially in this day and age where we're all, I think a lot of people are really getting back in touch with their heritage and where they come from. So I'm so excited to have you here. I know we're getting ready to wrap. There's more questions I'm sure that will be coming in. I hope you guys enjoy cooking. Go back and watch it several times. Um, I wanna encourage you to share your pictures also. If you have cooked, share them online. Tag Serpco Lexis when you post them so we can see all the beautiful dishes. We'll share them with chefs so he sees what all of you home cooks have done with it. We also wanna give um, a little shout out to you guys for these beautiful, koa chopsticks that Lexus has made. There's going to be a survey that goes out on Monday. And the first 150 people that answer that survey will get a pair of these. And there'll be more details that are emailed to you about that. So I think we cool. got a wrap. We just got to tell you, thank you so much. We really want to mahalo Pacific Home and Appliance Distribution. They loaned us this beautiful kitchen. Um, I used to be in this kitchen all the time doing cooking demos with chefs. I haven't been back in years. So I'm so excited that I was able to be back and join you. I can't wait to make these at home. And I can't wait. I'm wondering where the scones are. You must have brought me scones, right? <laughs> I did. <laughs> oh, yay! You brought me scones. So thank you guys all at home for watching. Um, we look forward to seeing you for our next master class. They're going to have one of my favorites. Justin Park with Bar Leather Apron is going to be doing a, a twist on classic cocktails. And I hope it has something to do with old fashions. I could use one of those right now. So thanks, everybody. Good night. Have a great one. Thank you so much, Chef. We're thank just you. so honored to have you. I'm honored to be here. And I wanted to thank all the Servco um, staff that helped do this and who chose us to prepare this for you today. And um, stay safe out there. Support your local restaurants. And thank you for supporting Lexus Lux Masterclass. Aloha, everybody.